Good morning, Cyber Warriors. Yeah, it may not be morning for you, but it's always morning for me. It just sounds more chipper. Anyway, today's adventure, we're going to sit there and talk about encoding and finding messages within encoded strings. Uh, and this is this is an interesting one, and uh, I hope you learned something. So going into our forensics questions here, um, some of them may ask you to um, identify some information that is on the system. Uh, maybe it's a string uh, asking you what it is. Maybe it's asking you for some file details. Maybe it's asking for running ports or services or programs running in certain directories. In this particular instance, we have this one, which is asking, what is the message in the following encoded string? And so it says encoded, but does it mean encrypted? Because that doesn't look like a message to me. Does it look like one to you? Probably not. So let's, let's go and ask the Oracle of Google, see what this says here. So encoding versus encryption. While encryption does not does involve encoding data, the two are not interchangeable terms. Encryption is always used when referring to data that's been securely encoded. Encoded data is used only when talking about data that's not securely encoded. So not securely encoded, that, that's a little confusing. So let's actually go to Stack Overflow and they have a really good explanation. So what is the difference between encoding and encryption? So this number one answer here, encoding transforms data into another format using a scheme that is publicly available so it can be easily reversed uh, or easily be reversed. Encryption transforms data into another format in such a way only specific individuals can reverse the transformation. Um, and that goes back to where they were talking about here where there are two basic types of encryption, symmetric key and public key. Uh, a key exchange allows you to basically make sure your door is locked and only certain people can get in. So going back to here again, this is using a scheme that is publicly available so that it can be easily reversed. And so what are we talking about in schemes here? Uh, schemes, they're talking about formats really, not, not really a whole like caper and misadventure or a scheme that you're trying to scam or do something like that. It's just a, a way of viewing the information. Um, you have two main ways that text is utilized or displayed on a screen, and that is ANSI and UTF-8. Um, ANSI stands for the American National Standards Institute and basically just means human readable text. Um, and uh, UTF-8 is Unicode Standard um, Transformation Format. It means basically the same thing. Uh, one is an enforced strategy, mostly enforced in the United States, which is widely adopted everywhere. But when you're looking at text, like in this notepad right here, this is actually in UTF-8 format. Um, and there are ways of knowing that usually like if you're using like notepad plus plus or some other um, thing, it'll, it'll actually be able to tell you what, what format it's used in. But ANSI and UTF-8 are so similar that they may as well be the same thing. Um, so it's, as far as the human eye is concerned, they're essentially the same. Now the other two, we have hex or hexadecimal. Um, and that is using a, a, a base 16 format. It does a mathematical equation to transform the data into a smaller subset of characters. But these characters, in a way, mean something specific where they can be translated. Uh, and base 64 is similar uh, using a 24-bit uh, mechanism to do the math. Uh, and there is a long, complicated way to do all of that. Ultimately, it's not important for you to know exactly how all of that works. And I, <coughs> excuse me, I definitely don't know it well enough to be able to explain it well enough um, that it would be useful to anyone. Uh, but the importance is I know 
what they kind of look like. So when I'm looking at a string that is in hex or in base 64, I have a general idea that's a base 64 or that's a hexadecimal uh, encoded string. So I can then go over to a website like this one here, which is ConvertString, ConvertString.com. They have a bunch of different encoders and decoders uh, and they have ways of being able to transform this data back to an ANSI or UTF-8 format so that we can actually read it as human readable text. In fact, what I want you to do right now is go down into the description, pull up this website, and from there, I want you to take the first string uh, and figure out which type of encoding has been done? Is it base 64? Is it hex? Why don't you go there, find out, pause the video, and when you're done, come back. Okay, so hopefully you're back. And we're going to take a look at this string, the first one, which I have here. And this is mostly numbers. Very few letters, uh, only a handful of letters in here. Uh, you're going to see A through F mostly in, in here. If you see any alphabet number uh, letters or characters in there at all. So what this tells me is that they're using a hexadecimal uh, encoding. So let's go to hex and the online hex decoder. We're going to go and make sure the input options are for nothing right now or blank because you have different ways of doing different delimiters and delimiters matter so you may have to go through a time or two to get it so that it displays properly but that's all right so go into here we're going to hex decode it and boom it tells us who is the kilt guy and as this is a forensics question that we have, we would go in and paste the response right there in order to get credit for the points. Now the other strings, so if we take a look at string two, which is this one, and you notice how this is mostly alphabet, this tells us that this is most likely base 64 encoded. So let's copy this. We're going to bring up our handy website, and I already have the base64 decoder up. We'll paste the string in there and decode it. And it says the kilt guy is a myth. Is that true? I'm not a myth. I'm really here. Let me go back in, just like with the other stuff. We paste our response in. Don't forget to save it to get your, your points. I'm not going to save it because I'm not really worried about it, points. Um, but those are the ways you do the decoding. Now you'll notice that I actually had a third one. This is a much longer string. And again, it's mostly just alphabet. There are some numbers in there. So what does this tell us? You're right, base 64. So let's take a look at it. Go back into here, we'll replace the old string, and we'll decode it. Oh, there's a new encoded string, but this is mostly uh, numbers. But there's also an X, and I told you, what were the alphabet characters you're going to see in hex code? A through F, right? Well, this, if we remember, is a means of delimiting. So it means to separate the different sections. So a delimiter is a separator. So we're going to copy this from here. We're going to go into here. And since this has a delimiter, we're going to take a look at our input options. Hyphen, no. ASCII space, no. Comma, no. 0x, yes. And 0x you'll find is the most common means of using a delimiter in hex. Just, just to show you that it won't work if you don't have it, 
let's go ahead and clear that out and try to just do a straighter, straighter decode. It doesn't work. So you have to go in, select a delimiter. And sometimes it means you have to do it a time or two or three in order to get the actual string. So boom. This time it tells us this is a hex string. I go back into our forensics question. We go to our answer and paste it and done. So we have seen a lot of times where the threat is double or even triple encoding a string. Sometimes it's just base64 on top of base64 on top of base64 again. Sometimes they mix hex and base64. Um, and the reason why they can do this is because the computer doesn't care. The computer can sit there and decode that automatically. It's just reading the binary information that's there. It's us. We can't interpret that. So they can actually have uh, this encrypted string somewhere in a web page, and it'll do something that you don't know what it's doing. Um, often it's associated with JavaScript, but sometimes it's run in PowerShell or other things that are associated with these. So that's just something that you need to be able to look for, find, and decode. Uh, because in your career in cybersecurity, you will encounter this. Um, a lot of times we have to look for it in, embedded inside other files, and I will cover that in another video. So in the meantime, there you have a couple different ways to encode information in a string and how to decode it. Alrighty then, Cyber Warriors. As per always, we're going to sit there and do a cover of what we already discussed. And that was the difference between encoding and encryption. We didn't go into details on how to do the encoding. We're definitely not going to go into details on how to do the encryption. But we did talk about how to pull the messages or transform encoded messages or in strings into human readable text so that we can actually interpret what's going on. Uh, and this is important because humans write these bits of code. And when they're writing a malicious JavaScript or something that they're going to put into memory in PowerShell, uh, they're, they have to write it so they understand it. And so what they want to do is they want to make it so it's difficult for endpoint systems and antivirus and these sorts of things to identify what's going on. So they encode it. Sometimes they multiple encode paths. So two or three. We're starting to see three a lot more common now in the wild. Um, and so it's just a method of making it a little more obscure, making it harder to find and understand. Um, and while the programs that they're running have the means of doing the encode or decode actually automatically uh, as part of their, their program, uh, sometimes the endpoint protection systems don't have the capability of doing multiple iterations of a decode. Um, we're seeing a lot more that are able to do it, which is probably why they're going the next step. Um, so it's always a game of one-upsmanship from the bad guys to the good guys. How do they defeat our mechanisms? How do we detect their mechanisms? It's a, a, a tennis game of the worst sort. Um, so there we go, right? So in order to identify what's happening on the system, uh, whether or not a registry key is being created, if a program is going to be running in the background, uh, if they're putting something up into your scheduled tasks, these are things we have to know and understand. In order to do that, we have to decode them from their encoded strings. So as per always, I hope you learned something. I hope it's been interesting. Um, if you're new here, please subscribe. Um, and uh, you know, if you found this useful, please hit the like button. Hack the algorithm by commenting below. Uh, let me know what you thought. And uh, let me know what you would like to see me cover. 
Uh, next video should be, I think I'm going to do, um, let's see, my notes say hidden messages in imagery. So that's going to be a fun one. Alrighty then, Cyber Warriors, I'll see you in the next video.